Hi guys, and welcome back to another video. So, um, I'm literally coming back from like a collective two hour nap. I usually don't nap, so I may be a little bit out of it right now. Um, but uh, today we're gonna be working my sketchbook and I wanted to attempt to do a full spread of just using like alcohol markers. I haven't really done this and Okay, let me explain what I'm doing right now first. I am kind of just prepping my sketchbook to work with alcohol markers. So my sketchbook is technically a notebook, so it does have a really thin paper type. So the markers will bleed even through the paper and then leave a lot of excess ink onto the next paper or page behind it. So I like to add some kind of marker paper or something or cardstock or anything I can behind it so that we have less um, transferring. And I can't really stop the bleed through anyways because the paper is thin so I'm just gonna deal with it at some later point. Um, yeah, so I usually don't do full spread marker doodling or drawing just because the way how I approach my sketchbook, I go pretty much in like chronological order and I don't really like hop around. I usually don't like skipping pages if I don't have to. So I was never really in the position to do a full spread because if I really liked a doodle that's on the right page, um, as soon as I flip it and I need to do a full spread, um, the left page will bleed through to the right page that I liked. So yeah, I decided to just skip um, a whole section so that I could just work in just a nice spread without worrying about bleed through or anything like that. And then later on, at some point, I'm just going to go back and cover the pages either with other pieces of paper, sticky notes, paint, anything of that sort to still use that paper up if I can. I did receive a comment. If I remember to find it, I'll insert it into uh, on the screen so you guys can check it out because I found this way or method. I don't know why it didn't occur to me or I didn't think it was like um, a very common thing to do. But if you do work um, on the right page of the sketchbook and then kind of skip a middle spread and then work on the left page of the next, like a, the page after. I don't know how I'm gonna explain this. I'm pretty sure the person who um, wrote the comment did a way better uh, way of explaining it. So definitely I'll hopefully leave the comment still on the screen. But basically there's a way for you to have the bleed through only on the, like the center spread so that you can glue it if you would like to and you can have it as if there was no bleed through to begin with. And for the most part, I would like to do that. And I really do like this idea. And I think it's a good way to hide bleed through if you don't mind. But for me, I like using up as many pages if I can um, as they are. Because I I don't want to lessen the amount of pages I have in the sketchbook. I like keeping the amount or I like adding more. Just because I don't want to be in a way for me. It, this is just for myself, by the way. I don't, like if someone else does this, I don't like deem it this way I don't see it this way kind of thing but I feel like it's cheating for me because I would be almost having the like half making half the amount of drawing or sketching than I would usually I pretend if I did do it um for every single page kind of thing right but that's kind of like extreme but that's like kind of my thought process it's just the way how I think um in terms of what we're drawing I should have probably explained this in the beginning <laughs> before we started um I've been browsing on Twitter a lot and seeing the fan meeting in Japan for Seventeen makes me really happy and I kind of just wanted to do the Seventeen for a little bit. I might, uh, I don't want to jinx myself, <laughs> probably on stream. I'm either going to draw Alban again because I there's something I want to draw but also brain rot um, or I want to draw something like Seventeen related because I think I mentioned this before, I've been struggling keeping my interests um, like separate from one another, if that makes sense. If I end up drawing fan art of everything I'm interested in, I feel like I lose interest in whatever that thing I drew. So I'm trying to keep it separate so that I don't get that kind of burnout. Right now I'm kind of consuming Seventeen content as just like, you know, a viewer. Um, I've been doing a little bit less fan art of them recently. And kind of for like that reason, but also 
I've been basically doing fan art for them for like seven years. So it's like for me, um, hmm, how to explain this? My style of what how I like how I like to draw them changed primarily from like maybe year one or like day I don't know. I I think I started doing fan art like about a month after they technically debuted um because i was working on exams and i had i believe i was in spring courses during that time so i didn't really have time to do any fan art properly but um pretty much from then until maybe five years in i really only did like chibi work mostly occasionally i would do like non-chibi work and stuff but i mostly did chibi work and that's what i was kind of known for and like kind of like the 17 fan art community but the more I switched over to doing more like portraiture, I did less chibi work. There's a little bit less pressure, but also like too much pressure still because I don't know. For me, portraiture takes a lot more time and likeness is harder to capture for myself when it's not like super stylized, if you make if that makes sense. And then I guess I don't know if this is like for people who are in fandoms, as something like as soon as something is like dropped or released. You feel compelled to kind of make fan art either because one you're super excited about it or two which might be the negative thing is that um you want to stay like relevant or on top of things like you don't want to let things sit for too long or like people i don't know people won't be as excited if that makes sense this is how my brain works by the way i'm pretty sure like you know if a person really likes and enjoys your art um, for a specific fandom. They don't really care if you're on time or not, right? But I know some people um, have messaged me saying like, oh, they released so-and-so teaser or like this photo was posted on their Instagram or on Twitter. Are you going to draw fan art for it? And in my brain, it's like, I really want to and I really do. But a part of me is like, well, I said I want to, but then like several days go by and then I'm like, ah, like, is it is it still okay to draw the fan art like am i late at that point which is kind of like unnecessary pressure from myself so i'm trying to combat that a bit and kind of to start fixing that problem for myself is the fact that i'm drawing wanu today if that wasn't obvious from like the text on the the spread and stuff but i decided to go back to the era where the, the, kind of like the beginning eras of Seventeen, so during Adore You, Manse, um, Pretty You, Aji Nice, and Boom Boom, I kind of did more of the comebacks during that time um, because the further back, I feel like there's less pressure um, rather than, you know, if I focused on their current teasers right now, as much as I do love them. And I know Wall News came out last, so yeah but i just want a little bit less pressure i've done this before where i would go and rewatch like old variety shows of theirs so like sbt club i would watch um one fine day which i always find fun and i would doodle from that but i would never post it because like i said like for me it feels irrelevant but it, technically it's not because like i said if people really enjoy your work for a fandom they'll it like they'll take anything at that point <laughs> but yeah it's just unnecessary like unnecessary pressure from myself um, but in terms of medium, like the title suggests, and I think I might have mentioned it earlier, I am working with alcohol markers. So these are the Art X ALP markers. Now I did bite the bullet and buy the 90 set as well because I remember someone telling me that. So I was gifted the 80 set for me to review and to try out, and then I was kind of stuck um with the color range because even though there's 80 colors there's a lot of pale colors i would have liked using but they didn't have um or at least i thought they didn't have but they do through their 90 set so i think the person told me that if you buy their 80 set and their 90 set you have pretty much their complete color range and to be honest i think i like the 90 set a little bit better um, not because like it has more markers, but their range of colors, I think there's a better selection of mid-tones. Well, I think there's a little bit less of mid-tones, but there's a lot of pastel colors, a bigger, larger range of grays if you like using them. So yeah, I just really like that. I did mostly use the 90 set for this page. I think there's only two markers that I used from the 80 set that I decided to pull just because it was a little bit easier to blend, um, I think the greens because the 90 set didn't really have that much greens. 
So, yeah, what else to talk about? Hmm. Ah, let's talk about the style that I chose to do these doodles in because uh, I'm having a little bit of regrets like in general with the spread and it's kind of just like personal preference. Usually when I like doing a spread, my expectation is like I like keeping things a little bit more cohesive or at least have like a cohesive like color palette, like something unif- like what am I saying? <laughs> Unifying the entire two pages right together and for me, because I did all the doodles kind of like separately, I didn't really take in consideration the color palette. I kind of just colored uh, what I remembered from the outfits. Um, I did try to find references of what I remembered. I tried to keep everything around the blue side of things until I got to Ajunice and Boom Boom, where I kind of just threw them out the window. I, I went with like more warm or muted toned. So yeah, but my initial idea, and I might do this Maybe for like a digital spread or something. Maybe we'll do a sketch with me this week. I haven't filmed it yet, but um, I wanted to do a spread where it's like the different eras, but maybe I'll make it more of a limited color palette again. Cause I think that's kind of fun. And I wanted to just do like kind of more of a full color spread. I don't really do this a lot because if I do, it tends to be either in watercolor, which I usually keep it quite sketchy or I do it with gouache. And I haven't been using gouache too often. It's a little bit more time consuming uh, for me to do. And I'm running out of time because I think we're hitting, I think the two week mark. No, Saturday was the two week mark for convention stuff. So I'm getting quite nervous about just having enough time to prep everything. I also have to do a mock-up of the table setup so that I can send the photo to my friend. So when me and her go, I think on Friday for the table setup, everything will be a-okay. Uh, but I am worried. <laughs> I am super worried, but I think it should be okay. I really do miss going to conventions, but I am very worried because I feel like I'm underprepared. Again, I think I'll be more prepared for anime fawn if that truly is a confirmation email. I'll, I will have to double check. Um, but yeah, for the markers, I am kind of just playing around. Like I said, I'm not very experienced with using alcohol markers in the past um, through other sketchbooks to have a little bit more of like a thicker paper. I would actually add kind of like light washes. So I had a old alcohol marker set. I don't really remember where it's from. It's probably from like Walmart or something. It's like a very basic set, but I had a really cute like pale blue a pale pink and even just like a gray color and i would carry these around in my pencil case so whenever i did any like 17 doodles and i wanted to add a little bit of value i usually liked using the alcohol markers because you could get rid of some really nice flat areas but you can see that i kind of struggled a little bit i was messing around with the hair i was trying to blend it but then I kind of settled for just leaving it as kind of like these little hatchy texture going downwards, like following the hairline. But then I will try to, I don't know, I think after, so the first one I did, the one with kind of doing the heart with his hands and his sleeve. Um, so the adore you doodle drawing. I tried to take my time to figure things out, see what I liked, see what I didn't like. And then I kind of moved on to the Manse and then Aju Nice, Pretty You, and Boom Boom. As soon as I got to, I think, Aju Nice, Pretty You, and Boom Boom, I kind of just like, not gave up, but I got really impatient. I think it's also because like, the, at this point, this is when I woke up from my second nap. So I took two naps um, during the day of filming this because I've been getting only four hours of sleep for the last few days, and I guess everything's kind of adding up and I'm getting like significantly tired. So yeah, I needed to nap just so I could power through the day and get back to my mm, unhealthy but normal schedule for myself. Um, but yeah, I took like a half an hour nap in the afternoon and then I did some work. I ate some food. I felt drowsy again while doing my dailies and then took a nav like another hour and a half nap and then I woke up and I'm like well now it's evening <laughs> uh but I decided to finish the rest of these and I wasn't really feeling the spread anymore first of all I kind of regret um doing line art with the kind of fine liner that I used I don't really like using 
line work because it's like it's literally for me it's like you have to kind of stay within the lines to keep things looking nice or like clean for the most part i do like being able to leave white space and stuff and i know some people suggest like oh you can do line work afterwards and I'm fine with that. Like usually when I work with water base markers, I have to do that because a lot of my pens do not work well with um, the markers because they're my pens are water based and my markers are water based at that point. So it would literally lift up the ink. But for these ones, because I was trying to do more like full color, I would most likely lose a lot of my lines if I didn't keep my lines done probably in graphite or some kind of like pencil crayon or something that wouldn't get lifted by the marker but i also didn't opt to do uh the line work with pencil crayons this time just because it was a little bit more tedious but i think i should have went with that route um i think the doodles could have came out softer and i think i wouldn't have opted to do my derp eyes which i think the first one that i drew looks super derpy <laughs> uh so i don't i'm not really liking it as much i think the other ones turned out okay but yeah i think maybe i'll reattempt this for maybe a digital spread i also kind of wanted to do i don't know if you guys have this moment so like if you're watching something or i guess like anything kind of more visual is there like a specific image that's kind of like it feels like it's just burned into your brain because i have some moments for like 17 either music videos or I think mo majority of them are actually performances that where I, like whenever they zoom in on a specific member sometimes that scene or like that part of the video that I've watched is kind of like permanently etched into my brain so if you're a 17 fan um if you remember during their debut showcase during 20 so this is for the vocal unit Dogyam singing his high note with that purple i think it's a purple sweater purple sweater his hair kind of like pushed back like forehead exposed really bright smile when he's doing his like i think it's the end part of the chorus or something um that's etched into my brain permanently the other one is uh dino during snap shoot obviously during his part um whenever he does that little hand under the chin pose he's wearing that bright pink hoodie very cute there's a few other ones i need to kind of rack my brain i think it's whenever they smile like super brightly it's like permanently etched just because like i find it so like endearing i think i think another one's like it's either a fan meeting or a fan signing or some kind of concert in oh wait let me think i think it's in yokohama so in japan they had it's either a concert or something so jonghan's wearing like a bright not bright kind of like a pastel giant pink sweater and i think he like sheepishly turns around because the mc was like roasting him about something like not being able to remember something or how can he not understand this kind of thing and he has like this sheepish smile that's very cute i think i've drawn this before which is probably contributes to why it's burned into my brain <laughs> i'm pretty sure i probably have one for each of the members i just need to rock my brain a little bit uh, to remember context but yeah those three are definitely uh, burned into my brain for a while i hope you guys don't mind that this video is quite rambly i know it's a little bit more niche um and i remember getting a comment on my sketchbook doodles that a lot of the doodles that i've done i don't give a lot of context so people who are not fans of like genshin or 17 i don't know what else what other fandoms i drew vtubers i guess um people didn't have context so i might be leaving people out i do apologize but i really only draw things that i really enjoy so it kind of i don't know kind of a double-edged sword at that point i do apologize though if you cannot relate to anything i've been spewing about in this video but i hope you enjoyed today's spread or little doodles uh maybe i'll reattempt something like this later but yeah I'm just gonna show you guys kind of the bleed through. You can tell how der like derpy my doodles look because you can check the eyes out, how derpy they look. But yeah, a um, little bit of bleed through, but I'll talk to you guys next time in the next video. Bye.